वेलकम फ्रेंड्स लेट अस कंटिन्यू टू स्टडी हीट एंजिन्स ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल काइंडली लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माय यूट्यूब चैनल द टॉपिक्स इंक्लूडेड इन टुडेज लेक्चर इज कार्नोट साइकिल विथ वेपर एज ए वर्किंग मीडियम कंस्ट्रक्शन एंड वर्किंग ऑफ कार्नोट साइकिल विथ वेपर एज ए वर्किंग मीडियम एंड एफिशियंसी ऑफ कार्नोट साइकिल विथ वेपर एज ए वर्किंग मीडियम Now let us see the component of Carnot cycle with vapor as a working medium. First component is the boiler in which heat is supplied and water is converted into steam. Second component is the steam turbine in which the steam generated in boiler is supplied to the steam turbine due to which turbine rotates and gives us the work done. the third component is condenser the steam coming out from the steam turbine is entered into the condenser where heat is rejected by the steam and the steam is converted into condensate that is liquid into the condenser and the mixture of steam and the water now enters into the compressor where the pressure and temperature of the mixture of water and steam is increased and supplied to the boiler so here work is supplied to the compressor so these are the components of the carnot cycle with vapor as a working medium let us uh, again uh, study one by one in a sequence boiler where heat is supplied turbine that uh, giving us the work done condenser from where heat is rejected and com uh, compressor to which we supply the work done so here let us see this boiler and condenser so boiler you can say it is a high temperature source where heat is supplied and condenser acts as a heat sink right which uh, in which the heat is rejected now let us uh, uh, draw it so boiler heat is supplied and uh, the state number is 122 and 122 the process is known as the reversible isothermal heat supplied then it passes through the process 223 in a turbine and 223 process is known as the reversible adiabatic expansion process then it passes through the process number 4 sorry process number 3 to 4 and that process is known as the reversible isothermal heat rejection and heat is rejected that is qr and then it passes through the process number 4 that is process 4 to 1 and that process is known as the reversible adiabatic compression where work is supplied to the compressor let us draw the pv diagram of the carnot cycle vapor as a working medium so whenever we are drawing the diagram that is pv diagram or ts diagram or any other diagram where the working medium are in two states two state means it is in liquid and vapor condition liquid and uh, you can say gaseous condition or mixture of uh, you can say liquid and vapor then we are required to draw this line so this line we have already studied in the chapter steam generation and this line or this curve is known as the saturation curve so saturation curve is required when you draw pv diagram or ts diagram of any working medium which passes through two states so we know that in boiler we supply the water and we are getting the steam so here at point 1 water that is liquid is there and point number 2 that is steam that is in gaseous state so here working medium is in two state and to draw it on pv diagram we are required to draw the you can say saturation curve so 1 to 2 is a reversible isothermal heat supply isothermal means temperature remains constant and heat is supplied and that is drawn by the horizontal line because in a boiler pressure is also constant i think there also we have studied in the previous uh, chapter that is the steam generation that in a boiler 
pressure on water or a steam always remains constant so that is a constant pressure process and due to that it is denoted by the horizontal line process number 1 to 2 heat is supplied then it passes through the process number 2 that is 2 to 3 and uh, it happens in a turbine and the name of that process is reversible adiabatic expansion it means entropy remains constant and it can be drawn by line a curve and 2 to 3 and work is given out so it is work is supplied to the surrounding then the process or next process takes place process number three to four and that name is the isothermal heat rejection as it is the isothermal the you can say we can draw in the line three to four because it pressure also remain constant so it is three to four heat is uh, rejected and last one is compressor where the reversible adiabatic compression process takes place and it is again drawn by the line 4 to 1 and where work is supplied now looking to this diagram can anybody say what will be the condition at point 1 it is liquid saturated liquid we can say what will be condition at point number 2 dry steam what will be condition at point number 3 wet steam and what will be condition at point number 4 again wet steam clear so that we can decide or define using the you can say saturation curve to understand fully the logic for this kindly refer my video during uh, you can say steam generation process now let us draw the ts diagram temperature entropy diagram again we have to draw the saturation curve first process is reversible isothermal so temperature remain constant so it is denoted by the line horizontal line because this one is the temperature so it is constant so one two two it is supplied next process is process number two two three name is reversible adiabatic expansion that is isentropic process and due to that it will be a vertical line because it is entropy and it remain constant so it is two two three here we are getting work done by the turbine and we are getting out the work the next process takes place in the condenser where heat is rejected and their process is reversible isothermal heat rejection so this is the reversible isothermal heat rejection and it is horizontal line and next one is the compression and it is known as the reversible adiabatic compression process where entropy remain constant so it is vertical line so looking to this temperature entropy curve let us see process number one two two constant temperature and that is known as the t1 or th that is the heat source temperature and another temperature remain constants during process number three to four that is the you can say condenser where also the heat rejection takes place and so it is the heat sink temperature that is t2 or tl now you can see uh, that uh, 2 to 3 and 4 to 1 are the isentropic process and due to that s1 is equals to s4 and s2 is equals to s3 now let us uh, find out the you can say the enthalpy at every point then value of heat supplied work uh, given uh, uh, given us by the turbine wt that is heat rejected qr and wc work given to compressor so let us find out all these terms one by one h1 is enthalpy of water entering the boiler and h2 is what enthalpy of steam coming out from the boiler so at one point one enthalpy is h1 at point two enthalpy is h2 which enthalpy will be higher h1 on h2 yes h2 will be higher and due to that we can say that heat supplied to the boiler that is equals to h2 minus h1 now that is qs is equals to h2 minus h1 now let us study the next component work done right what is the enthalpy at h point number two enthalpy of steam coming out from the boiler or entering into the turbine and h3 is enthalpy of steam coming out from the turbine or entering the condenser so enthalpy at this and in the turbine we are getting the work done so which enthalpy will be higher 
H2 will be higher or H3 will be higher? Yes, H2 will be higher. Some uh, out of this H2, some work done we are getting. That is WT. So WT work done is equals to H2 minus H3. Now next component is condenser, right? Now let us see again. H3 is the enthalpy of steam coming out from the turbine or entering the condenser. So enthalpy at point 3 is H3. And H4 is the enthalpy of condensate, that is the mixture of water and steam coming out from the condenser. So coming out from the condenser. And in condenser, heat is rejected. So at what point enthalpy will be more? At point 3 or at point 4? Yes, 8.3 enthalpy will be more. So we can say QR is equals to H3 minus H4. Now, what is the next component? Compressor. Right? So let us see again. H4 is enthalpy of condensate. That is a mixture of water and steam coming out from the condenser and entering the compressor. And H1 is enthalpy of, uh, you can say, mixer. That is a water and steam coming out from the compressor and entering the boiler. And we are supplying the work to the compressor. So which enthalpy will be more, H1 or H4? Yes, here H1 will be more. And due to that, WC will be equal to H1 minus H4. Now network done. What is the equation that we have studied in the fundamental W, uh, sorry, QS minus QR? Now what is QS? H2 minus H1. QR, H3 minus H4. Now giving the simplification, H2 minus H1 minus H3 plus H4. Now rearranging this term. It is H2 minus H3 minus H1 plus H4. So again rearranging, we are going to get H2 minus H3 into bracket minus H1 minus H4 into bracket. What is H2 minus H3? WT. And what is H1 minus H4? WC. So work done can be written as WT minus WC also. So work done can be written as QS minus QR or it can be written as WT minus WC. Now efficiency. One uh, efficiency is equal to W divided by heat supply. That is our basic or fundamental equation. What is W? QS minus QR. That is 1 minus QR by QS. Clear? Now, what is heat uh, transfer equation? That is Q is equal to T into delta S. Now, this is our TS diagram. Now, heat is transferred during which process? Isothermal heat supply. That is process number 1, 2, 2. So, heat is supplied is equal to temperature at this point. That is T1. That is the heat source temperature. And DS, that is a change in entropy. That is S2 minus S1. Similarly, heat is rejected during which process? Process number 3 to 4. And what is the temperature at this process? That is T2 or TL, that is heat sink temperature. That is QR is equals to T2 into S3 minus S4. Now we know that S2 is equals to S3 and S4 is equals to S1. So substituting it here, it will be S2 and it is S1. Now putting this value in this equation, Efficiency is equals to 1 minus QR by QS. So 1 minus T2 into S2 minus S1 divided by T1 into S2 minus S1. So the answer is 1 minus T2 divided by T1 or it is 1 minus TL minus TH. That is the efficiency equation for the Carnot cycle vapor. Now limitations of Carnot cycle having working medium vapor. Now let us look at this cycle, clear? Now look at the point number two. Now point number two, uh, at point number two, what is the state of the steam? Yes, it is a dry and saturated steam and it enters into the turbine. Now two to three is the process takes place in a turbine. Now you can look at all the points on two to three. All are having which condition of steam or which type of steam? Yes. At all points on process number 2 to 3, having wet steam. And wet steam means mixture of water and steam. And this wet steam is into the turbine. 
or it is in contact with the turbine blade. So when water is in contact with the turbine blade, the erosion of uh, turbine blade or you can say corrosion of turbine blade takes place and it reduces the life of the turbine. That is the, you can say, one of the limitation of Carnot vapor cycle. Another thing, whatever the process we have studied, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, and 4, to 1, we have considered that all processes are reversible process, but we know that in actual, process, in actual practice, no processes are reversible process. Now, as it is a constant temperature process, which process? Process number 1, 2, 2. There is isothermal process. We cannot heat the steam after point 2 because after point number 2, the steam superheating will start and the temperature of steam will increase. Now, if the temperature of steam will increase, it cannot be the isothermal process. And due to that, superheating of steam in Carnot vapor cycle is not possible. So these are the some of the limitations of Carnot vapor cycle. Let us study it one by one. In working medium, that is vapor is not perfectly ideal gas. Mixture of water and steam is to be compressed in compressor, which is practically very difficult. Now look at this, this figure again. Now at, what is the condition of steam at point number, uh, you can say, 4, when it enters through the compressor? So when the... Uh, you can say the working fluid enters into the compressor, it is at point number 4, and the condition of steam at point number 4 is wet steam. That is that it is having the mixture of water and steam. So it is very difficult to compress the mixture of liquid and steam into the compressor. So that is one of the limitations. In actual practice, no processes are reversible. And the superheating of steam is not possible, as we have discussed. And due to that, it, it affects the life of a turbine. Now, Carnot cycle, that is vapor, working medium, is not suitable or impractical for actual power cycles. Because process number 1, 2, 2, maximum temperature that can be used in the cycle is limited to 374 degrees centigrade for water. Because it is constant temperature process, it cannot be increased. If we are going to increase it, it will be superheating and temperature will not remain constant. Process 2 to 3, erosion and wear of turbine blades due to steam with a high moisture content flows to the turbine, as we have discussed. Process number 3 to 4, it is not possible to condensate the steam completely into the condenser. Means it is not possible to convert totally into liquid from point 3 to point 4. And 4 to 1, it is not practically feasible to design a compressor that handles the wet steam, that is a mixture of water and steam. So these are the limitations and due to that, it is not suitable for actual power cycles. Kindly, uh, Ask your queries into the comment box. Kindly like, share and subscribe my YouTube channel. Thank you.